Susanna from Make a Mess here. Today we're working on a sloth project. Super cute and very colorful and fun. Um, if you are one of our subscribers, then you may have already gotten your kit in the mail. And if so, then perhaps you've opened it. If not, we can open it together. You'll see that everything you need is in this box and it's in there really tight and compact so that nothing spills or gets anywhere. Um, if you open these little boxes here, you'll find all your bits and pieces. So you can get your, your paints and your brushes. Look at this one, oh my goodness. I love this neon blue color, it's so bright. It's one of my favorites. Um, there's a little tan. <laughs> and for this project, we're gonna need a few tools. So. Um, we'll use this polka dotter tool. The brushes we're gonna use is an angled flat brush and a beautiful rigger style um, fine tip. And then these guys, everybody loves these. These are our little mini polka dotters. They do our little details for us so perfectly. So those are the tools that we're gonna need for the sloth project. And obviously we need a few more colors. So we'll check that out, that's in the other little box. Whoops, <laughs> colors flying everywhere. Uh, there's the turquoise, so we're gonna use the turquoise and that bright neon blue color for our background. They're so nice together and they blend really nice together. Um, and then there's a purple and white and black, which are always a necessity bright green color which we'll use in those leaves and the foliage and some brown for shading the tree. So this kit has everything we need right here in front of us to make this beautiful little sloth project. So the canvas is in the box very snug but we did that for a reason because we don't want anything to get damaged in the shipping so it might be a little tricky to get it out but that's okay. And there we go it's right at the bottom. There's our canvas. We'll turn this guy into our easel and get ready to paint. Okay, so let's get started on this project. We always work from the background to the foreground. So we're gonna start with our background colors, which are in the tubes. So grab the blue and the turquoise tubes. And you can either have a palette on the side and dip into it, or if you just put a little bit kind of back and forth of blue at the bottom, that's fine too. We're gonna start with the blue. Use your big dabber. And now you just wanna squish and slide back and forth. Now this bright blue has a kind of a transparent base. So if you want it to be more blue, you can add another layer once it dries, or if you like that sort of pastel blue, you can leave it at that. The beautiful thing about acrylics is that we can always layer. Might add just a little bit more now while it's wet. What you don't wanna do is um, don't stop halfway through. See what it does? Make sure you really go straight across, one side to the other, and you can do your edges as you go. And then when you're ready to blend from one color to the other, you'll do another strip of the blue, like we've been doing, and then add a little strip of the turquoise color, and you go over both of them at the same time and they'll blend. So back and forth. You can see they'll start blending together. You don't want to go work your way too far back down into the blue or the turquoise might sort of take over a bit, but they do blend really easily together, these colors, so it'll turn out no matter what. See how I'm going long strokes back and forth, and I'm gonna work my way all the way to the top now with the turquoise. Don't forget to get your edges too. There we go. Background, check. I would let that dry a little bit first and then we'll do the next step. If you're super eager and you can't wait for it to dry, you can always get your handy dandy hair dryer out. So if you want to do a second coat, if you like the light colors like this, you can leave it. Or this one I did a second coat on. Either way works. It's sort of uh, different strokes for different folks situation, um, whichever way you like it. If you are going to add a second coat, you're going to do the exact same thing we just did. Just um, make sure that you wash and dry your brush before applying the second coat. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it for this one so you can see the difference. 
Okay, so I'm grabbing the um, tan color and we're gonna use that to double dip and make our branch on the sloth. If you see, it doesn't have to be straight branch. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Don't worry about that. It's more natural if it's an organic sort of line than something really straight anyway. Um, and we're just gonna go, I usually use the edge of the angled brush. That's the brush I'm using, sorry. And we're just gonna go sort of diagonally across the page. Oh, don't know if you can see that. And then another line that runs par parallel next to that line. So it's just going to be the other side of our branch, the top side of our branch, just to outline exactly where we want our branch to go. Then you'll take a little bit of your beige or your tan color kind of and put some, if you have a palette, you can use your palette. If you have a paper plate, you can use a paper plate. Um, even just a little piece of scrap cardboard would work too. Um, and then you're going to take a bit of your brown and put it on your palette near your tan, like so. Then what you're going to do is dip half of your brush in each color. It's getting kind of gunky. So half of it in the tan color and half of it in the brown. And we're gonna start filling in our branch. We're just gonna do little sort of vertical lines from the top or from the bottom to the top or top to bottom, whatever's comfortable for you. It doesn't really matter. So I'm dipping a bit of brown and a bit of tan and I'm pulling the brush flat from one line to the other. And we're making the texture of this bark on this tree. And some spots might be a little bit more tan colored and some spots might be a little bit more brown, but that's okay. Makes it more realistic. And some spots will be new colors that you've mixed together with the two different shades. You're gonna do that all the way along your branch. If you need to sort of go around your outlines again to pop it up, that's fine. If some spots seem to be too dark, you can just add a dip of light. If it's too light, add a dip of the dark. What you don't want to do is go over and over and over the two colors until the whole branch is just one tone. It's nice to see the variation in there and that's what makes it feel more realistic. You can even take a bit of the darker tone and throw it along the bottom a bit. Makes it feel a bit more shadowy underneath, like your branch is three-dimensional. As you get along the branch too, sometimes the colors do just blend together, but just add them, add them as you need them. It's fine if you need more of the light or more of the dark, just dip directly into it. You don't always have to double dip as you get going because your brush is full of paint already. The other thing we want to do is add the little branches coming off of our, of our main branch. And to do that, these brushes, the angled brushes, you always want to pull away from the tip of the brush. So if you're um, trying to do a thinner line, put your brush down with the angle up and then pull away from it. And that's how you can get thinner lines. You'll see if you try it on a scrap piece of paper, if you push, Against the angle, you'll get a much thicker line. And if you pull with the angle, you'll get a thinner line. So sometimes it's handy to use it the other way, but most times we want it to have the, the, the thinner edge and the detail. Um, maybe one down here too for a little leaf, something like that. All right, so then you're gonna wanna wash your brush up before the next step. All right, so our next step is going to be the leaves. Um, I'm just gonna pick this up. <laughs> Um, we're gonna add in these leaves. Now I'm using that bright green, but I'm double dipping in the blue. So remember the blue that we had from the background? It's over here. This blue, you wanna keep that nearby because we're gonna need it, and the green. So in your palette, with a clean brush, this is how I clean my brushes, I wipe them on my pants. If you have pants you can wipe on, you can do that too if you want, or an apron or you can get water and wash it and dry it. So 
Sometimes I'm too lazy to do that. So a bigger bit of green paint in your palette and a little dabble do ya of the neon blue. And that's how we're gonna mix our deeper values of green in there by using the blue and the green together. But first we'll start with the bright colors. So we're gonna do the shapes of the leaves first. So where the stem um, comes out of the branch, at the top of each leaf, you wanna do almost like the top of a heart, or like one of those M birds even, just two little crescents that come in. And then they're gonna come down into a long, almost an oval shaped leaf. There's no right or wrong. It can be a bit squiggly if the wind is blowing. Your leaf is not gonna be perfectly straight on at you, so don't worry about it being perfect. That is the beauty of art. Nothing is perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. So again, we're just gonna do that little sort of top of the heart and then stretch it out into the leaf shape. And down at the bottom the same way. This one, maybe I'll have that one curve a little bit like that. So I'm sort of just mapping out where I want my leaves to go. And then I'm gonna take the edge of my brush and pull it away from the angle. And we're gonna do a line that goes right down the middle of my leaf from where the stem is all the way to the tip of the leaf. And you can do that on each of them. This guy, you kind of just bake it. And then you're gonna angle lines going down your leaf. Kind of like an arrow shape to the end. Now the screen's a little bit see-through and you can see your colors underneath. Don't sweat the small stuff. You, that will happen and just let that happen. The blue underneath is gonna actually add some shading and do some toning um, to the leaves for us, which is awesome because we're gonna use that blue anyway. So we'll take a little bit of our blue and a little bit of our green and we'll mix them together. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just gonna take a teeny bit. And all I'm trying to do here is get a deeper value of green than the lime green. Okay, so it doesn't matter exactly if you have the same tone as me when you're mixing, that's fine. Remember, my paintings are always just inspiration and everybody's painting is gonna turn out different and that's my favorite part. So with a little bit of green, this new sort of deeper value of green, we'll fill in all of our little pockets that we just made. And if it happens, you can kind of see on mine, if it happens that you're losing your bright green, no big deal when you don't have a ton of paint on your brush, dip back into the bright green and throw some back in. Might take a couple of coats to get that to your satisfaction. And um, you just wanna keep going around and filling each little pocket in and then fixing up your highlights if need be as you go. Okay, so um, the last thing we're gonna do to our leaves, oops, see a little spot. Um, get kind of the majority of the paint off the brush. You can use a paper towel or your jeans. <laughs> um, we're gonna take the black paint and you just need the teeniest, tiniest bit of black. Teeny, teeny, tiny, little double do ya. Just put it on your palette somewhere and then just mix it in to your deeper green value. So now all we're doing is making an even darker green. And this is gonna be sort of a shadowy color. And all this is gonna do is go along the bottoms of our leaves and just pops them up a teeny bit off the canvas and makes them feel a little bit more realistic. Now remember when you're using the angled brush, you have to go away from the tip of the brush to make it a thinner line. If that's difficult for you, feel free to try the other fine point brush for those details. Either one is, is fine. There we go. Some leaves. 
Now it's time for the sloth. So we're gonna go back to our sort of bright tan color and we're gonna use our fine tip brush for this part. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break our sloth into geometric shapes. So let's take a look at him for a minute. His head is going to be a circle shape and that's gonna be the first shape we put on and we'll build him from there. So his head's a circle. And then if you really look carefully at it, really all his arms are is long sort of sausage shaped ovals. See how they are? So those are the three main shapes we're gonna put on there first. So it's big circle head, well not too big, cute circle head. And his sausage arms. <laughs> And then we'll throw these little background guys in after. So I'm dipping, you can pour some out or dip directly into your little paint, paint uh, palette. I don't know what that is, paint tube, paint pot, that's what it is. <laughs> You'll dip into your paint pot and do a circle that's a little bit lower than the branch, sort of closer to that other leaf that you did. And they're all gonna be a little different, so do not sweat it if it's not the exact same size as mine or if it's not the exact same shape. And I would say, there's my hand in comparison, I would say it's about the size of like, maybe a baseball, something, an apple. It's not huge. So there's our head shape, easy peasy, one sort of floating circle. With these brushes, just a little note, the harder you push, the thicker your line's gonna be. So the lighter you push, the thinner your line will be. So in this scenario, it doesn't matter too, too much because we're gonna fill it in, but that's a really good thing to keep in mind. Um, for the next part of the project especially. So right next to his head, we're gonna do a sausage shape that comes up. It's touching the head, see, just a little bit. It's gonna come up over the branch just a tad. And then it's gonna come down into a curve at the bottom. And that curve is going to be lower than his head. So here's his head, and the sausage needs to end a bit lower than that head, okay? Now the other one is gonna be, so here's our first arm. The other one is gonna be tilted a bit on an angle. So almost like um, an, an arrow with the two arms or maybe like an upside down V or something. Doesn't have to be drastic, but a little bit tilted. And the sausage shape is gonna start up at the top next to the other one and tilt it down just a bit. And it goes maybe a smidge further down than the other leg, just a smidge. So we have a circle and we have two sausage shapes. If you need to pause right now and get to that point, do so. Okay, so now that we have those shapes, it's easy to connect and sort of make the rest of his body. So from the, from the circle to the first little sausage shape, that's his front arm, we're just gonna do a sort of a soft line that connects them. And then it's gonna come down into his Bum, and it curves to connect the other one. Something like that. Can you see them coming together? Now we'll put in his third, or his third leg, yeah. His, back, his other back leg. <laughs> and it's gonna come about, remember to try and keep them all around the same size. It's gonna come from his little bum area straight up. And then the other little piece is just gonna kind of sneak in. So see, it's about the same width. It can be a teeny bit smaller since it's a little bit further away, that's fine. And then you're gonna stop when you get to the branch. Because at that point, it goes behind the branch. And then we're gonna come up to the top and sort of line it up. And we're gonna bring this around. And watch what I'm doing here. I'll try and get it nice and close so you can see. I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm gonna push down a little bit and then pull away 
And these are gonna become his little claws. So I'm gonna do three strokes like that. One, two, and maybe I'll sneak one in over here too. Three. So there's his little claws holding on tight to the branch. And little fingies. Okie dokie, so let's do his other leg that's in the, his front leg that's in the distance. So again, we're kind of just sneaking it in behind. So kind of from that circle part, or you know, just underneath, um, kind of between the circle and that sausage shape, you can come up and then skip, stop at the branch, skip over, and then do a crescent shape at the top of the branch. And then from there we can do his claws again and they're gonna kinda come in like, similar to the other hand did, but we're gonna see the top of this one with a bit of fur. So we're just gonna kinda put them in there for now and then we'll add some more details in a little bit. There we go, those cute little claws. Okay, there's his um, body. It's looking pretty good. We've got them all mapped out. So it's interesting how you can see geometric shapes in everything you paint. So make sure you're looking for that. Even when you're sketching, you can always break things down into simple geometric shapes and put them together. That's, that's really what, um, what, what art is all about, just seeing it in a different way. So once you have that filled in, you're gonna find your purples. So you should have a darker purple and a lighter purple. We're gonna need both and we're still gonna need that bright tan color. And I'm gonna bounce back a little bit between both the, both the detail brush and the angled brush. Um, I always choose the angled brush first because it, it can cover area faster and I like to paint quickly, but you can do either or. So we're gonna add a little face in here. If we take a moment and look at the shape of his face, um, see that it's kind of a circle shape, but it comes in at the top, like the top of a heart. And that was very similar to the shape of our leaves, right? So you can think about doing a top of a heart, but instead of it coming to a point at the bottom, it's just gonna round. And now that, that shape is also gonna be down a little bit in our circle. We don't want it to be right at the top because we want to, we want to have some forehead fur. So I'm gonna do a little top of his head, similar to the top of a heart, and then come down like so. I might even bring mine down just a bit more. And that's okay, because you can layer acrylics. So if you screw up, don't panic. Every mistake is a happy mistake. I'm gonna make mine bigger for now and put a little bit of fur on it after. Um, and then once you have that shape, go ahead and fill it in with that tan color using the, the wider edge of your brush. And if you see a bit of the blue come through, I actually really like that when it's happening because I feel like it's kind of giving it some shading and it feels a little bit more realistic than being this like super vibrant face. Okie dokie, next step. Now you're gonna take your dark purple and um, it's okay that you still have that tan color on the brush because we're gonna double dip a little bit here and there anyway. And you're gonna start filling in all those shapes. When you're filling them in, you can go over your lines, that's fine, but still fill them in the direction that they are. So like, and, and on their own, like their own little canvas. So fill in his arm shape and that part comes right over the, the wood branch. That's fine. That's what makes it feel like he's holding on tight. Comes a little bit over the top too. And fill in all those little pockets around him carefully going around your edges. Remember I wanted to just make my face start a little bit lower. So to correct where I put that, I'm just gonna go right on top of my beige with the purple or my tan. And 
me is really starting to come together. This project is so cute. I'm gonna give it to my daughter because I call her my sloth. She can hang it in her room. Maybe, maybe she'll have two. <laughs> or who knows, maybe she'll wanna paint her own. I got a little bit of purple over here. Oh no. If you get it right away, you can usually kind of just, goodbye. You may want to use a paper towel. At the top here, you can kind of just give them a little belly, just fill it in. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top. Maybe just give a little triangle of the negative space of the sky peeking through there. So it looks like he's hanging low on the branch. Don't forget this little pocket up at the top here. It's the little top of his hand. So cute. Okay, so I've got it all filled in with the dark purple. I'm gonna take the blue back to that beautiful bright neon blue. Put a little bit of blue somewhere else on my palette. We don't want it to be the same blue we mixed the green in because now we're double dipping the blue with the purple. So you can put a bit of purple there too if you want. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of the blue. I've got lots of purple on my brush, so I'm not, I don't need a ton of it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of the dark blue sort of in his belly area, just to make our purple a little bit darker in there. Oops, not too much. It's always less is more when you're dipping. I just did a big dip there, but I took some off after because it's way better to go back and dip again than to struggle with globs of paint. And then I'm gonna put a little bit at the bottom of his sort of back and his bum too. It's just to give it a little bit of depth once we start layering. Um, and then this little piece up here can have a bit too if you want. Like that. Uh, at this point, you're gonna wanna let it dry a little bit. I think our face is dry, so we'll go ahead and do the next step on the face. Um, but definitely let the body dry before you start adding the fur. So, for his little eyes, we're gonna do a circle on either side of his face. Again, if you're, the, if you're more comfortable with the, 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 tilt, the little detail brush, you can switch brushes. That's fine, either one will work. And then a circle on the other side of his face. And all I'm doing is after I have a circle sort of placed there, I'm just dragging the paint to the edge of his face because it has sort of like a longer oval shape around his eyes. Something like that. Now you don't want those shapes to be too big, but they do need to be big enough to fit his little eyes. And if you need to know how big those eyes are gonna be, we're gonna use the little dabber later on. So that's the size of his eyes. So make sure you don't have to touch it to it, especially now because it's wet, but you can give it a quick like peek and make sure it's gonna fit. That one, he's gonna fit good. This one I might fatten up just a little bit because it's nice to have that dark area around his eye to show once the black's on there. Okay, and then his little nose section, also in the purple, in the deeper purple, um, is kind of a triangle shape with soft corners. Let's look at that really quick. So there's his eyes that we just did and we pulled it to the side. And the mouth is gonna be sort of a triangle shape. Can you see that triangle? So it's like that way, this way, that way. But there's no tr sharp edges on our triangle. They're all rounded, soft edges. Maybe I'll switch to my other brush just to show them how to use that one too. Again, if you're gonna use this brush, remember the harder you push, the thicker your line's gonna be. So I'm gonna do a line at the bottom and then I'm gonna do a soft edge up, oops, to the top, and then a soft edge back down. Mm 
And if it's easier to, to fill it in with that brush while you're at it, you can. Or you can switch back to your other brush because this one fills in super fast. But if you do that, be careful of your edges. Maybe a little bit bigger because I want to make him really happy. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger this way. Okay. He's looking super cute. I bet yours is too. All right. Let it dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so next step, he's nice and dry now. You can touch him. Um, next step is going to be his fur. So again, let's take a little look at that, okay? His fur is all done with the detail brush. And I'm, when I'm stroking, I'm gonna stroke ever so gently, just using the edge of my brush. Just dip the tip and stroke the tip of the brush ever so gently to make each individual fur. And I know that sounds tedious, but it's gonna make or break him and he's gonna look super cute when you do it. So I'm gonna dip into the light purple now and we can also play in that bright tan sort of color. And you can double dip because that's my favorite thing to do. If you're eating, make sure you flip and dip. Get in trouble for that. But definitely when you're painting, you can double dip as much as you want. You can even triple dip. So when I say double dip, I'm actually dipping into the purple and then into the tan. And sometimes you might just dip purple and sometimes you might just dip tan. And then what I'm gonna do is just gently start adding fur strokes all over my Mr. Sloth here. Doo, doo, doo. If that brush stroke made a sound, it would go swish. And by adding our highlights on top, it's really bringing our little sloth to life. It's giving him so much dimension, because now we have all these layers, and it's making him feel much more realistic when you have lots of layers and different colors in there, so it's not flat. And if you feel like you need to use some deeper colors, you can always dip into that dark purple here too. You can add those guys in there too. So I'm just kind of following the inside of my first arm. Lots of little furs. You don't have to rush this part. Put on some music. Do it to the music. When you get to the edge of, of the arm, you can kind of go over the, the lines that you originally did. I'm sure they're still showing through a little bit and that's okay. Go over them just a little bit. Make sure that they look really fluffy and furry. And when it comes to the top of the arm, I just usually start at the top and then pull down. And I'm doing this with a brighter color, so it kind of gives it that highlight. Like the light is hitting the top of the edge of, of his little wrist when it's wrapping around there. just keep layering until you feel like that arm is furry enough and then move on and do the next. I'm going to show you how to do the little head section because that part's really important. Think of it like a part, like your hair, like a part in your hair. So see how we've got that like heart shape? Um, the part's going to be like right up the middle of that, of the heart. So start your brush sort of at that section and pull away and then the opposite direction too. Oop, need some paint. And I'm always playing. Sometimes I dip in the light, sometimes I dip in the tan, sometimes I dip in the dark, sometimes I dip in two of them at once because I like to double dip. And you just fill it all in with lots of little strokes. So my, my hair strokes on the head are following that direction. So it comes from the middle and it works its way out to the side. And then the same thing's gonna happen on the other side. Little furry monkey. I talk to the paintings a lot. If you do a brush stroke and it just doesn't seem to go on, it might just be because the, the layer underneath is a little wet still. 
and it's just blending the paint instead of actually like applying the paint on the surface. So if that happens, move on and then come back to it. You'll be able to do it, no problem. Okay, and we're just gonna continue. So we'll do his body the same way. Now, when you come to this body, think of the direction you would pet him. So you would pet him this way. So his fur is gonna go that way too. And you can really add lots of fun little furs in here. Wiggle them in a bit. You don't see as much of the highlighting in this area, the darker part of the belly. Maybe dip a little bit more into your darker purple in there, especially because you have a blue base. And maybe a teeny bit in your light purple just to give a bit, but I wouldn't put much of the, um, of the tan in there yet. You can do that on the outsides of his body a bit more. And then you can even have the odd little one. See how this guy comes right off? That's kind of fun. He's fluffy. He can come off. He doesn't have to be perfectly into those shapes that we originally drew. That was just our, our map, our guidelines. This guy's super fluffy. <laughs> We will name him Sir Fluffalot. Okay, let's do the other leg now too. And that's the same idea as the first. And we're gonna work to vertical or top to bottom, bottom to top. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure your, br your brush strokes go in that direction. And when it comes to the top of his leg, don't forget that little kind of highlight at the top. The light's hitting the top of his leg a bit. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna sneak a couple in under here under his neck. If you see little spots that just need a bit of filler, just do a couple little furry brush strokes here and there if you need to. Um, and then we'll move on to his hind leg back here and then the other little front leg that's at the back too. They may be a little bit darker, not as bright with the tan they're a little bit in the distance and a bit more shadowy, but I always like to add a bit of the tan sort of on the edges. So it pops them out off the canvas a little bit. Plus it helps to cover the fact that we outlined them in tan. And the part of the top of his hand, if you can see it here, you can just kind of do the same thing you did over here, make sure it's nice and bright. He's looking super cute. There, he's nice and furry. I'm just kind of touching my edges up to make sure I got right up close to the branch. And go through it, make sure you don't see any little spots anywhere. And um, we are doing really well on this. We're almost done. We've just got the details left. Because I don't really need mine. Okay, so I've added black to the palette. Just a teeny bit in a little spot there or your paper plate, whatever you've got going on. Um, make sure it's really dry before you do this step, but wait till you get to do it because it's so fun and it really brings it to life. So with this little dabber, you're gonna dip just the tip of it in and usually there's too much paint on it. So just dab it off somewhere. You can dab it on your palette. It doesn't have to be on your table, but it can be if you're allowed. Make sure you have some newspaper down or something if you're as messy as me. Um, okay, so I just dipped the edge in, I dabbed a little bit off, and then this is gonna make our eye shape in the middle of those two little purple pockets we made on the face. Push down, pull up. Super easy peasy lemon squeezy. Push down, pull up. He is all ready coming together. So we're gonna go back to our um, detail brush. With these detail brushes, um, to get a nice fine line, sometimes we'll get a little like fluffy when you're painting with them. If you use a paper towel or I'm just using my fingers, just gently squeeze the bristles together and sort of rotate it, then they'll all like stick nice together and make a good sharp tip on your brush. I call that sharpening a brush. Um, so if you ever hear me say that, that's all I'm referring to is just getting your brush back into shape so that you can get a good fine line and some nice detail. Um, so with my nice sharp brush, I dipped just the tip in. Can you see? It's like just the teeniest, tiniest bit of paint. And so carefully, I'm gonna just go along the top of his eyeball. Can you see that? 
I'm gonna go all the way along the top of his eyeball and do almost like a little bit of an eyelid, just, just a little bit. And it's kind of the shape of an eyebrow, just a little arch. It barely comes off either side. It doesn't have to be a super big noticeable detail. It's just gonna add a little bit of personality to him. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna do is his, his little smile, which is a really adorable little grin. So it's just a crescent shape, a long crescent shape from one side of the bottom of that triangle to the other. And then you can do the little curves just to make him extra happy if you want. And then a couple little tiny nostrils, just like little dabs. I'm really just dabbing my, the tip of my brush really carefully. Um, sometimes I can do like a little bit of a shape of a nose, but you don't have to do that part. It, it's neither here nor there. Um, let that dry for a minute. And then with the black on your brush, you're gonna do little shadows. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if you can see this part. We're gonna add in, see how there's like a little shadow in behind the tree? We're gonna add a little bit of black there just to pop it away from the tree. A little slight line to break up his toes. Now. If that seems like it's a little too much for you to do those small lines, you don't have to do that part. You don't, it's, it's optional. If you've got control of that brush and you wanna go ahead and try to add that extra layer of detail, this is how you do it. So you dip your black in just a little tiny bit and you're gonna add a little bit of shadow underneath the tree on both of those arms that are coming up and around. And then the other thing I like to do with the black, and again, this is optional. If you feel like this might screw up your painting and you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Um, but I like to add just the odd little black fur to give it that extra layer of depth. Another cute little spot for those black um, little fluffy furs, just little shadowy ones. You can add a few in his belly area in here because it's darker in there, right? It's shadowy. It kind of helps to make his arms stand out from the rest of his body too. Or if you need to do that back here too, that's fine. Here, not a ton, just a couple little ones. You don't want the black to take over. That's why I said it's optional really. Like you, I'd rather you didn't do it if it's gonna become that your whole sloth is black. It's just a little bit. And you can practice that brush stroke on a piece of paper too if you want before you get going on it. Just really light with the hand. Did we get all that? Oh, the other part with the black. Again, an optional step. This does help to um, make his little thingy stand up off the branch, but I'm just gonna do like a small little shadow line, always on the same side. Cause that's like his, his finger is just casting a shadow on the branch. And then again on the other little one over here. Here we go. Then give that brush a quick wash and um, sharpen it again. Remember with the paper towel, you're gonna squeeze and pinch. I don't have a paper towel, so I just get really messy and do use my fingers. Um, and we're gonna open the white. We're really close to being done. The white is always the like icing on the cake. It's that little twinkle that brings your whole painting to life every time you use it. So you can dip right into your um, paint pot if you want. You don't have to pour it on your palette, but if you want to, that's fine too. And remember with these brushes, I'm still using that detail brush, we're just gonna dip the tip. A teeny tiny bit of paint, little tiny bit. Less is so much more in this, in this scenario. So just with a teeny bit of white, you're gonna add a little highlight on the top of his nose. Um, you can flip your brush and use like the hard part of your brush and dab it in to your white. And then do one little dab on the same side, the top 
part of the black of his eyes. And look at how he comes to life. He looks so happy. And then with a little bit of white, we can highlight so we can add a little bit on the tops of your leaves. You can add a little bit of furs at the top of his head that have a little bit of the white in it. So it's just kind of like the lights hitting his head and shining a bit. You can put a little highlight down each of his fingers. Just a long stroke. Maybe a couple over here. And once you've got all your highlights in there, your painting is complete. And you can sign your name, you can use a Sharpie, or you can try your detail brush out. And um, once he's dry, you can hang him on your wall and enjoy your beautiful little sloth painting. I would love to see how yours turned out. So please comment your pictures below, send them to me. I would love to see them. And um, I really enjoy seeing how every project is always different and that's the best thing about art. So don't feel like yours has to be exactly like mine. They're all gonna be different. Even when I do it again, it, uh, it, it's completely different. Look at, there's two different guys right here. Two little sloth buddies. Till next time. <laughs>